We know that our computers are designed for a lot of different uses, and sometimes we need to customize what our computer is doing for us. So inside of your computer are these expansion slots. There are different types of expansion slots with different types of bus architectures on your computer, but they're going to look something like this. This happens to be PCI slots that are inside my computer. I even have a riser card here, which is a card that plugs into the motherboard directly so that my cards can fit sideways in my system. And because this system is so narrow, we have to have this riser card just so we can fit additional expansion cards into the system. It's not tall enough to allow me to plug it in in a, hard, in a vertical. I have to plug it in horizontally just to fit them into this chassis. Very common in a server type environment. And your expansion slots will be on your system too. Usually expansion slots are easy to find because they're designed so that you can take the cover off and you can add your own expansion cards in here. You can add your own video cards. You can add additional USB ports. It's designed for upgradability. So usually those are very easy easy to find in your system, and they'll be very, very obvious when you look at them. If you aren't quite certain exactly what these cards are, notice some of these are PCI, some of these are different kinds of PCI Express type connections. You aren't quite exactly sure exactly the type of connections they are. Grab the manual for your motherboard. It will tell you exactly what components are on your motherboard, exactly what chips are there. It really is a nice map of exactly what's there. Sometimes you can read the motherboard itself, unless you're watching this in high definition. You probably can't read a PCIe for PCI Express. It's actually written onto the motherboard itself. So occasionally, the, the circuit board except, it itself has etching on it that helps explain the type of connection that's there. For instance, next to the battery, it's obviously written right there. It's the battery. So this can be useful, too. You can find exactly what's on the motherboard, maybe just by reading what happens to be there. Understanding the way a computer works, it's a very, very basic system, actually. When you step back and you look at exactly the way your computer is operating, there is a certain set of steps that happens every time you use your computer. This is a very, very simple diagram that really does explain quite nicely all of the different methods that are used inside of your computer to process information. You always need an input. You need some way to get information into your computer. Us human beings, we use a keyboard, we use a mouse, and that's the way that we will add information into our computer. We can also do that with some type of other technologies too. It may be on a larger computer, it may be a different type of input. It might be a scanner, for instance, to get information into your computer. Once we get the information in there, we need to process it somehow. We have chips inside of our computer, we have CPUs, we have something that's able to look at what we've provided it and allow it to now do something for us. Do we need to take this information we provided? Is it a picture? Do we need to process this picture? Do we need to get rid of red eye? Is this a video? Do I need to edit this video? Do I need to change the way the audio sounds? We need to process, process it in some way. During that processing phase, we are almost always going to store this information somewhere. This storage may be in temporary RAM, it may be in those memory sticks that are on our motherboard. We may need to store this on our hard drive so that we're able to access it later once we've powered off our computer and powered it back on again. And so this processing, the CPU is always talking out to memory. It's always talking out to your hard drive. There's constant communication there as the processing takes place to be able to have all of these things happening. And finally, once we have processed this, we've gotten rid of our red eye, we've, we've done our video editing, we've changed the audio we needed to change, we have to have the information outputted to us. If you're watching this video, you're watching this on some type of output. You're watching it on a screen on your computer. You're watching it on your television. You're watching it on something or you're listening to it on your iPod. You're having some method is getting that information out from inside of your computer and making it available to you. Every time you use your computer, you're always going to be going through these basic steps. There's going to be an input, there's going to be processing, there will be a storage mechanism, and there will be output. And as we go through all of these modules of this training course, you'll start to see this in every aspect of what we do with computers. It will always come back to this very basic operation every single time we use our system. Now that we've gone through this introduction to personal computers, let's see what we've learned. Let's go through a few questions. So our first question is, which part of the personal computer is responsible for calculating instructions? And if you go back to all of those different components we looked at, this was our central processing unit, or the CPU. That's the one I had my heat sinks and my fans right on. That's the piece that gets really hot because it is doing the major set of calculations inside of your computer. Another question, which part of the computer provides you with a way to upgrade it very modularly? 
What can we do? What type of, of components are on our motherboard that allow us to make changes to our computer? And that would be our expansion slots. There are a lot of different kinds of expansion slots. Before you begin to buy things for your computer, you have to know what kind of expansion slots you have so that the components you're buying will fit properly and will operate properly with those expansion slots. And our last question, what chip contains the information necessary just to get the computer off the ground, just to get things started? There's a very, very important part of our motherboard that provides that for us. And that would be our what's called complementary metal oxide semiconductor. That's our CMOS. We almost never call it a complementary metal oxide semiconductor for obvious reasons. And the basic input-output system, the BIOS of our computer. We have separate video modules that will be talking just about the CMOS and the BIOS in our computer. So that's a very, very important part of what we do with our computer, because if we didn't have that, our computer would never get started. Well, that's brought us to the end of our introduction to personal computers. We've now gone through all of these different components on your computer, and hopefully you feel comfortable now with unplugging your power, taking the cover off of your computer, looking inside of it, and knowing exactly what we're looking at inside of our computer, whether it's our CPU or our I.O. interfaces or the memory or the hard drives or anything else. And you'll find that once you really understand that piece, it all becomes a lot more comfortable now. We feel a lot more comfortable while working inside of our computer and understanding how each one of those different components works. Well, thanks for joining us for this module. If you'd like to see any of our absolutely free CompTIA a certification modules, you'd like to participate in our message boards, send me a message or much more, you can visit our website at freeaplus.com.